welcome to another video. This is Christmas baking part two because I've got a lot to bake. So if you've missed the baking part one, which was scones, sausage rolls and fruitcake, I will link that in the description box below for you. So do go and check that out. Today we are all about the bananas, all about the bananas today. I'm going to be making banana mousse cups, banana fudge, banana bread, banana oat cookies and sweet potato banana brownies. So I've got my trusty cup of tea a nice lemon and ginger tea and we're going to get started so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to bake my sweet potatoes now usually i prefer to bake these in the oven um and make them really soft and squidgy however i am running out of time so today they are going in the air fryer 45 minutes to an hour on 180 and hopefully they'll be nice and soft and squidgy then i've got to let them completely cool before i can do the brownies so that obviously needs to be done first and whilst they're in the air fryer, I'm going to get on with all the other things that I need to do, which shouldn't take me as long. So get yourself a cup of tea because we could be here a while again and let's do some baking. So all my sweet potatoes have now been pierced. I've got three. For the actual recipe, you only need about two. However, I'm going to do an extra one for my lunch because I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. So, you know, prepping. Rather than get stressed out with what I'm going to have for lunch today, I thought, well, I'm making sweet potatoes, so let's just do an extra one and let's just uh, have that for lunch with some vegetables. So let me chuck these in the air fryer. Now that they're in the air fryer, now I've got to do all the rest of it. And this is where I get really stressed out with myself because I never know where to start. I never know where to start. I've got two lots of banana bread, two lots of banana oats, two lots of banana fudge, and two lots of banana mousse cups to make as well. So I think, let's think. The longest ones to make is gonna be the bread. So I think I'm gonna start off with the banana bread. Whilst my sweet potatoes are in the air fryer, um, I'm gonna start on my banana bread. So I need to make a normal banana bread and I'm also going to make a chocolate banana bread. So to start with, I need 240 grams of flour. Now I'm using oat flour because I just prefer to use it. So I just got my oats and I just blended them up until they were into like a fine uh, flour powder type of thing. So this is a healthier version of banana bread. So if you want the full banana bread with all the sugar and eggs and all that kind of stuff, this one's not for you because this is more of a healthier version of things. So what I do with the banana bread is I dump it all in, mix and go because I haven't got the time to be fancy. So I've got 240 grams of flour, then got 96 grams of brown sugar. Now I would usually use coconut sugar, but they didn't have any in Aldi and everywhere else it's just way too expensive. So I'm using light brown sugar instead. So I pop that in as well. I also need to have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder so it can rise. Instead of using eggs, I use applesauce to bind it all together. So it's 100 grams of applesauce here. And then I've got 180 grams of mashed banana or two small to medium bananas to be fine. And then I'm just gonna mix it all up and, and pop it in a baking tray. And then I put it in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Again, put a skewer in, pull it out. If it's clean, then you know, then you know it's cooked. I'm also going to be making a chocolate banana bread, which is exactly the same recipe, but I will be putting uh, 13 grams of cocoa powder in. And I will also put in 20 grams of chocolate chips because you know it's Christmas and I'm gonna treat myself with some chocolate chips. So that is what I'm doing here. So I'm just mixing all this up. It does take a little bit of mixing um, because obviously there is no egg or no milk or anything else. But if you wanted to put milk in it and you are plant-based, just put a little bit of uh, plant-based milk. So if you're not plant-based, instead of the applesauce, put eggs. And instead of plant-based milk, if you want to add some milk in, then you can just put normal milk in. So it's up to you. It's just a bit of a healthier version of a banana bread. So this is all mixed up now. As you can see here, it's all mixed in. So now I'm just going to transfer this into a lined baking tin. And I'm going to put that in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And then I'm going to be doing the chocolate one. So my banana bread is all in the tin now try and show you about it falling out. That's now gonna go in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes, and then I'm going to start on the chocolate banana bread. I'm just making the chocolate banana bread now. Um, so it's exactly the same recipe as I've done before, but this time I've added in 20 grams of dark chocolate chips. So you don't have to use dark chocolate, you can use any chocolate you want. I just prefer dark chocolate. 
What chocolate do you prefer? Milk chocolate, dark chocolate or white chocolate? Now I love dark chocolate, but I also like white chocolate, but dark chocolate is more me. Um, and then I'm gonna put in uh, 13 grams of uh, cocoa powder. And then I'm just gonna mix all that together and this turns it into a chocolate banana bread. So again, the recipe is exactly the same. Now this recipe um, is a normal banana bread recipe, but then I adapted it to make it more plant-based. So instead of eggs, I used applesauce. So it's it's not really one that I've put out of a book. It's one that I've kind of done myself, really. I've just kept adapting things until I got it how I how I prefer. But that's the fun of baking sometimes, isn't it? It's trial and error. Trying things and then next time you do it, try something different and so on and so forth. It's turned it into a nice chocolate banana bread, which is absolutely lovely. And with those dark chocolate chips in the middle as well, it's gonna be delicious. Now, I'm gonna to have to leave that to the side for a little while because my other banana bread is cooking and I've only got one tin like that. So I'm gonna to have to wait for that to be done. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get on with my banana oat cookies and my banana fudge and banana mousse cups. Next up, I'm making my banana and peanut butter fudge. So again, I'm plant-based. Traditional fudge with all the evaporated milk and everything else. So this is my healthier version of it. Um, now, I'm making two batches of this, so it's double the amount. So usually this is 90 grams of mashed banana, but I've got 180. Um, and then you meant to use coconut flour, but I don't have coconut flour. And again, it's a bit more expensive. So I've got 60 grams of... Um, oat flour so again I've just blended up some of my normal porridge oats that I have every day but if you're just doing one batch you would half that so it would be 30 grams of flour we just pop that in with the bananas and then you're going to need one teaspoon of vanilla essence now the recipe I'm going to be doing is basic it's a basic recipe you could add shredded coconut to it you could add chocolate chips you could add raisins you can add whatever you want to it if you want to um, I'm just going to do a very simple basic project recipe then we need some peanut butter now if you've got peanut butter powder great if you don't have peanut butter powder just use normal peanut butter. Now I prefer this uh, natural peanut butter from Aldi and the only ingredient in it is peanuts. That's the only ingredient and that's the kind of peanut butter I prefer. I don't like anything with palm oil or seed oil or anything like that. I just prefer to have it with just peanuts in the ingredients so you know exactly what you're eating. So usually this is 24 grams of peanut butter, but obviously I'm going to do 48 grams of peanut butter. So it's all mixed, it's all in there in the bowl, and then you're just going to mix it all up so it turns into a, a fudge. So you've got to keep going with it, because um, it doesn't look too good to start with. It does look quite messy, but the more you mix, the thicker it gets, and it turns into a lovely peanut butter and banana fudge now you can either do two things with this you can either make it put it into one big tin and then slice it up into fudge pieces how i like to do it because i'm the only one that eats it and i know that if i had a bar i would eat the entire bar i would just sit there and eat it out of the tin so i have silicone things cases in so I've got all these little ones I've got hearts here and I've got stars as well and I do have circles but do you know what because it's Christmas I think I'm going to go hearts and stars today so I'm just going to fill each one of those up with a bit of this mix and then you just pop that in the freezer for about two hours until they're completely frozen pop them out of there and leave them in a tub in the freezer and then it's just like having little mini bites of banana ice cream and it's just Oh, it's just so yummy. But again, this is one that I have adapted as I've gone along, as I've gone on my plant-based journey. It's something I've adapted. So I will put the recipe in my Facebook group. So if you want to go and check out my Facebook group, then the links for that is in the description box below. So let me get this in the little silicone cases and then I will show you what it looks like when it's done. All the peanut butter fudges are now in their little stars or they're in hearts. Um, I made 20 of them all together, so that batch made me 20 little bites, which is great because it's only me, so that will last me a good month or so. I'm going to pop these in the freezer now, so it takes a couple of hours for them to set. 
Uh, I'll quickly show what they're like afterwards, but now I've got to wash up because again, I've got no bowls. And then I'm going to get onto the banana mousse cups because they also need to go in the freezer. Then I've got two more things to bake after that. Next, I'm doing my sweet potato and banana brownies. So I've got 123 grams of mashed banana in there. I'm also going to put in 80 grams of rolled oats, which I've made into oat flour. I've also got two sweet potatoes, which have been baked and cooled down. So they're going to go in as well. I'm going to do one teaspoon of vanilla essence. And I'm going to be doing um, 13 grams of cocoa powder. So to give it that chocolatey taste. So all you've got to do now is mix all this up into a nice kind of brownie batter. You're going to line a baking tin and pour it into a baking tin and put it in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Again, I always do 20 minutes and I put a skewer in to see if it's cooked. If it comes out clean, it is completely cooked. If you're like me and you like gooey brownies, because I love a gooey brownie, um, I always make sure that when it comes out, a little bit of the batter still on the skewer, and then it's a nice gooey brownie, because who doesn't love a gooey brownie? And then you can serve this with some yogurt, some plant-based yogurt or normal yogurt, and of course, strawberries, because brownies and strawberries are the perfect combination. So there we go, there is the brownie batter all ready to be cooked. So this is gonna go in the oven now for 20, 25 minutes. And then I'm going to make some oat cookies and then I've got the banana mousse cups to make as well. Next, I'm making my oat cookies. They're really easy. It's two, maybe three ingredients if you want to add in any extras. So all it is is one large banana, which I've mashed up in a bowl already. And then it is 40 grams of oats. Now you can make them oat flour if you want to, but I don't. I just use straight oats. 40 grams of oats in here. And that's it. There we go, all done. Now, you can, if you want to, add a little bit of vanilla essence, which I'm going to, because I just prefer the taste of it, but if you don't want to, then you don't have to. I would just add in one teaspoon, and then all you're going to do is mix it up. Then all you're gonna do is take a tablespoon of the mix and make little tiny cookies. These don't spread out like normal cookies, so whatever shape you put them in is what they're gonna stay in when you bake them. And that's actually not enough, so I'm actually going to do a never banana and a never load of oats with that one. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same mix, but I'm gonna do chocolate. And if you've been watching the video, then you know that I just had cocoa powder in. Um, but in this, you could add in some shredded coconut, you could add in some cranberries if you want to, to make them really crisp Christmassy. Uh, you can add chocolate chips in, whatever you want to. And that is pretty much how you do banana oat cookies. It's the easiest and simplest recipe. Great to get your kids into baking because it's so easy and there's no cutting up or anything else. It's just mashing a banana. So if you've got little ones that want to get into cooking and maybe they're toddlers, then maybe start off with a recipe like this. It'd be really, really good. So I'm going to add in some more oats and I'm going to add in another banana and I'm going to do those. And I'm going to make some chocolate ones as well. So these are my oats cookies to go in the oven. I've already got one lot in the oven. I think it's made about 20 oat cookies altogether. So they're going in the oven now and then I'm gonna make some chocolate ones as well. I'm almost done. Spent the whole morning cooking. I started at nine, it's now 11.30. So I think another 30 minutes, so nine till 12. Um, and then I've done all my Christmas baking. All this will be frozen, there'll be some bits left out, but it'll be frozen because you can just get it out, defrost it and just leave it on the side overnight or whatever and it, you're good to go the next day. So I just like to do this. I like to batch cook things. I like to spend one day a month just batch cooking a load of things, snacks, meals, all those different items ready in case I'm caught short or we've got really busy weeks or anything. I just grab something out the freezer and chuck it in the oven and it's done within 20 minutes or something. Um, but if I want some extra snacks and I don't, and I'm on a budget and I can't afford to go out and buy sweets and all the junk food that we all buy, um, I just thought, I can just get these out of the freezer in the morning and I can have them for an afternoon snack or I can have them after my dinner for a little pudding or something like that with some ice cream or some yogurt and fruit or anything else. So that's why I do it. But I just wanted to get a big batch done over Christmas so I didn't have to do any baking over Christmas. My final thing to do is chocolate mousse cups. I absolutely love these. Um, again, I can't remember where I found the recipe. All my recipes that I've done over the last two videos will all be over on my Facebook group, Solo Mum to One. There's a link in the description box below. If you want to come over and join us over there, um, you will see all the recipes that I have done over the last two videos. Um, but if you are looking for the scones or the sausage roll recipe i have linked cupcake Gemma and katie picks in the description below because that's where i got that recipe from the chocolate mousse cups is 
So it's two mashed bananas, but I've actually done four bananas because I'm doubling up the recipe. In with the bananas, you need to add 86 grams of yogurt. So obviously I'm doubling up, so I'm gonna add more. And you can add any yogurt you want into this. So it can be a plant-based yogurt, it could be a Greek yogurt, fat-free Greek yogurt and even natural yogurt. I've tried this recipe with all different types of yogurt and it works with all of them. So whatever one works for you. So you're just gonna add 86 grams of yogurt into the mix. And once you've done that, you're then gonna add 13 grams again of cocoa powder, but you really don't have to. And then you're just going to mix all of that in to make a nice big bowl of like chocolate mousse however we're not quite done yet what we need to do now is melt um, 100 grams of dark chocolate again you can use milk chocolate if you want to you can even try it with white chocolate I've never tried it with white chocolate before but you could do that if you want um, so I'm just going to melt uh, 100 grams of dark chocolate in the microwave quickly bake it so it's like baked oats or you could microwave it and see what happens oh I might try that I might experiment with that let's see so I'm going to melt the chocolate now and then we pour that into there and then we put them into our silicone cups yet again my trusty silicone cups and we freeze them for a couple of hours till they're nice and hard and it's like a chocolate ice cream a chocolate bite ice cream oh it's delicious if you didn't want to um, do it in bite size you could do it in like a big silicone tub or a big tub and you can just scoop it out when you want some chocolate ice cream it's just a bit of a healthier version really it's got none of the added sugars or or the additives or anything like that so it's completely up to you what you do um but even just doing the video with you now it's given me a load of different ideas so wait till the new year i'm gonna be baking and experimenting lots with my food i'm excited but let me melt this chocolate so i can get that in here and get it in the freezer and these are my banana mousse chocolate mousse cups um, and I'm going to put these in the freezer right now um, and then they will harden up and it'll be like a little chocolate banana ice cream bite as well. So I'm going to pop these in the freezer and I'll show you in a couple of hours once they're frozen uh, what they look like. Please excuse the noise outside. We've got someone doing a new drive next door, but these are a few of my bakes. So over here we have sweet potato and banana brownies. are absolutely delicious. I've also got my oat biscuits here. So I've got plain oat biscuits there and I've got chocolate oat biscuits just there. And I've obviously got my two banana breads as well. My chocolate banana bread and my normal banana bread. So all I need to do now is slice all this up and put it in the freezer but I will have some first. Finally guys, you've got my chocolate mousse cups here. So they're absolutely delicious. Um, and they've been in the freezer for a couple of hours now. So I just got them out. I put them out the silicone cases and I put them on a plate. I'm gonna put these in a tub and pop them back in the freezer before they melt. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming along with me on my little Christmas baking journey. I know it's for some and not for others, um, but I usually do a big, baking session once a month and I just thought I'd do it just before Christmas so over the Christmas and New Year period I haven't got to worry about doing any of that kind of stuff and I could just relax and unwind from all of the year that we've had um there is a couple more videos coming up for you so vlogmas isn't over just yet uh, but we are almost at the end and just again want to say thank you for joining me today on my second baking video if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you are not new here, but you are yet to hit that subscribe button, please consider doing so. I would really, really appreciate it. I hope whenever you're watching this, you are having a good morning, good day or good evening, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye guys.